Missouri River here in Montana is one of my favorite watersheds that I have in the region. I like everything about the Missouri from its trout to its carp and it even holds a population of sturgeon and paddlefish in its lower reaches. A lot of the allure for the Missouri is the size of the Missouri and the amount of water that's in it houses a lot of dynamic areas for us to fish. The volume of food and the volume of activity of the insects that are in the river is really quite striking. Even on a hot 80 degree bluebird day, you'll get a trico hatch that looks like snow. The tricos have their spinner fall, they line up in these big foam lines and you see a lot of fish that move into the foam lines to collect their food. The foam lines offer a lot of shade. They offer protection as well from you know, aerial predators and just being seen and lounging underneath these foam blankets and you watch them and you'll see the scum and the foam float in a big mat and it'll drift all the way out in the middle of the river and the carp some of the trout will follow those mats all the way around in a circle and they'll follow them, big hundred yard recirculators, and they'll follow them into just skinny, super shallow water where their backs protrude out of the foam. What I really like about the carp is you get an opportunity to fish for them in the hottest portions of the summer, bright blue, sunny skies, and the amount of activity that takes place with the carp seems to spike during these warmer time frames. One good thing that the scum offers for the fish, not only in the food collection and as well from the standpoint of predation, it affords the angler a spot where they can get an opportunity at rising carp on a dry. Lots of my friends fish carp all over the west, all over the midwest. Lots of sculpin varieties, crayfish varieties, even dough balls and dough ball chumming to catch carp. But the Missouri system for its carp is very legit fishing. You find these fish are laid up in very narrow lanes. They also lay up where they're not easily accessible and they're very spooky. They're very wary fish in the river. And all it takes is one person to come by at the inopportune time and an entire pool that had been working for an hour and a half goes dormant and all the fish just evaporate. theory going around that what makes them spooky on the dry fly is as the carp rises it's able to look behind him as he makes the rise and he checks a lot of the perimeter every time that fish makes a rise he looks all the way around and he gets a 360 degree view of what he's looking at and if he rises and sees something new in that there's a possibility that he's going to leave or he's not going to re-rise in the same spot that they came up before. Sometimes the carp aren't in there searching actively left and right and looking for different insects in the film. When you watch a trout siphon through all of the trichos to eat the one caddis, and the carp, they're very particular, and I envision them eating in a straight line, and I see them eat an ant, and a hopper, and then some scum, and a couple other things. And a lot of the times I've learned to get my fly in the vicinity let it sit for a moment, wait to see the head, and see a direction from the fish. And sometimes you can make a quick strip, one or two, or maybe slide it just over in front of the fish so you become the third item of food in line. Sometimes these fish, when you hit the water, they run over to see what it is. Sometimes they don't care. And if you're not directly in a straight line with these fish, they'll bypass you, they'll swim right by, they'll snuff your fly, they'll eat something right next to you because it was in a straight line. So it's really paramount that you, know, you make that cast, you make it, you stick it in there, you watch the fish, you see a direction or maybe the line hitting the water changed the complete direction of the fish or they turn around and they start coming towards you. There seems to be a special time of day when the fish really go crazy and they're very tolerant of you being there and the activity going around. We call it the hour of power. The benefit of being there at that time is the fish are fairly blatant in their rising and they're fairly indiscriminate in what they eat.
and it's not uncommon to look down and see yourself well into your backing on your seven weight before it's done with its initial first run. Very rarely do the fish come back that easily. There's three or four fights in them. And then you have to deal with the quick explosions as well when the fish come close to you and you try to net them or you try to grab them by the tail. The carp don't have a wrist on their tail, so it's a really difficult grab with one hand. You almost have to beach them or net them to get them successfully. You just really can't get a grip on their tail like you can a steelhead or a permit or any of the other fish that have a solid wrist in their tail.